What's up friends, today we are here with a brand new part in the Inazuma race board build series. And today we're going to be upgrading the battery from 14S 8P to 18S 6P. And this is a huge jump in both power and performance for this board. So I'm super excited to get into it and this is gonna be a long one. So stay tuned to the very end, to see how it all comes out. You make my heart beat, beat super fast. All right guys, so today we are going to be building the battery in here as I mentioned. If you have not caught the previous parts of this build series for the Inazuma race board, be sure to check the playlist out in the uh, description or check out the last video up in the iCard. Now, like I said, building the battery. So we have a lot of steps to go into building a battery and for an 18S battery, they're actually almost exactly the same as any other battery that I've done on the channel. And I will link the last battery build I did up in the iCard for your information. But as with every other battery, we gotta put on fish paper rings. We gotta glue all the cells together. We gotta weld on the nickel, wrap them in fish paper, and then make our series connections, do our balance wires, tie everything up, double check the voltage, and uh, wire up the charge port, wire up the BMS. Yeah, you can see why this is going to be a long video because we're going to do every single one of those steps. So be sure to use the chapters down below if you are interested in a specific part of the video to make sure that you learn exactly what you need. So let's just jump right into it and we'll start on this build. So I've gone ahead and cut all of the fish paper. So we got 18 pieces of fish paper here. Quite a lot of length. But this is what it takes to keep all of the cells safe. And this is only a couple of the P groups, but I've got all of the P groups fully glued and ready to get wrapped up in the fish paper. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap them all up. Kill the backing. line it up like so over and roll firmly into it and there you go there's one 17 more to go All right, so I got all of my P groups wrapped up and now we're gonna put a piece of fiber tape around each of them and we're gonna plop them into place in the enclosure just to get an idea of what we're looking at here. Right, so we got all of our P groups done and ready to move on to the next step. So I've decided on my layout, this will be cell number one and all the way up here, this will be cell number 18. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And <clears throat> this does mean that I'm going to have to run the negative from all the way up here, back here twice for the two power inputs on the solo, but that's something that I'm willing to deal with in order to um, have a less annoying series connection layout. For the series connections on these, like I said, I think this layout will make them a bit easier because they just go straight along and straight back and straight down again. So 
We'll be able to run the balance wires down these channels. And uh, for all the series connections, I believe I will be using two strips of um, copper braid because I think that'll be the easiest thing to solder across here rather than uh, 10 gauge wires and the copper braid should be more than enough. So we'll be doing that here. And yeah, so the nickel for these, I think I'm going to try and get some 6P uh, pre-cut strips because I only have 25 millimeter wide nickel, which is only wide enough for like just the sides. And I need it to go up and over. So yeah, I need to figure that out still, but find out in a few seconds. But for me, it will be however long it takes me to figure out that solution. All right, there are a lot of batteries on deck right now. And uh, this video clip will look very similar because it will be in both the Black Mama build and the race board build. But my race board battery is right here. I have just got the nickel strips in. Uh, the last clip I left off talking about not knowing what I was doing. I managed to find someone who was able to sell me some straight nickel strips. So we will be using these to weld up the race board battery and I'll be doing that tonight in uh, conjunction with this one, which I will also be using the same nickel strips for. So uh, in a couple minutes, <clears throat> well, a couple seconds for you, but in a couple minutes for me, I will be welding up this pack. And you guys have seen lots of welding montages so far. I've got all these battery builds. I'll link one or two of them up in the iCard over there. But I'll put in a couple of clips of me welding and then we'll move along with the battery build. I should mention here before the music comes in that for some reason these cells seem to be pretty dirty from the factory. So I just used some alcohol to clean off the gunk before doing all of my welding. All right, so I went ahead and actually took off one of the nickel strips that I welded on because uh, we got the negative here and then the positive there and I forgot to solder on the two cables. So we actually need to solder one cable here at the end uh, for each of the two inputs on the solo and that is going to end up with two long pieces of wire for the positive and then for the negative, two short pieces of wire. And some people might think, oh, well, this big difference in length, is it gonna cause a problem? Well, the reality is no. So really nothing to be worried about. Uh, the difference in resistance is not that much. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we solder the positive here at a angle and the negative at an angle as well to make sure they fit properly.
All right, so now we've got the, the two positive leads soldered onto this end nickel strip. And we just have one more step to do here, which is to solder on the charge positive wire, which will go from the charge port uh, into the battery and provide it with positive charge. Now, I did space these out specifically so I could put that third charge wire in there. And uh, I think that'll be all we need for the positive end. Now that we've got all three cables soldered onto this strip, it's time to go ahead and weld it onto the pack. Now, I did actually go ahead and get an extra strip of fish paper for the shoulder of these cells and an extra piece to insulate just to be extra safe. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but uh, because of the spot that I soldered the cables onto the strip, we actually have to offset it a little bit upwards, which does make for some weird welds, but uh, basically all I'm really doing here is just welding next to the slot that you're supposed to weld around, and that's really not that big of a deal. So uh, if you're going to do a pack like this, make sure you calculate the location of your solder before you weld it onto the pack. Alrighty, so similar to the positive end of the battery, I have gone up and done my two discharge connections from the negative. So up here you'll see the positive with the uh, charge plus lead going to the positive of the pack along with the two positive discharge leads that will go back here to the two XT90s. On this one we see the B minus, which is the blue here which will be going to the B minus on the BMS. And then we have the two discharge cables. Now, of course, I will need to connect a balance lead to both this end and the other end, but it's easy enough to cut through that captain tape to add a tiny balance lead. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and lay out all of these cell groups in the enclosure. And uh, we're going to end up starting with the front here. Um, I'm going to bend down all these tabs and then line up all the cells here and basically what I'm going to do is tape them all together using fiber tape and basically make one strong brick here and that will make it much easier for me to make sure nothing is shifting around when I start soldering the braid from cell to cell and then similarly we will add another group of three here taped across three here taped across and then I will tape on the final two to this one. So we'll have one, two, three, and four bricks of cells. And after those are all taped together, then we will start on the soldering, which is probably gonna take a while. All right, so I'm part way through uh, taping up the battery and stuff. I just wanna show you one extra precaution that I'm taking. On the positive side of these packs, you have the nickel that is getting folded over onto this side positive is only the round part of the positive terminal so that means the shoulder of the cell is actually negative now when we go ahead and bend this over it would contact that shoulder and there's a slight slight chance that you might wear through both the fish paper and the plastic so because it's such a high powered pack i'm just going to go ahead and stick an extra piece of fish paper strip uh, between that shoulder and that folded over nickel strip Right, so we've got all of the packs taped up and all the tabs bent down. You can see here, ah, got one big pack here, pack here, all taped together, same here and then same here at the end. So these are all taped up, ready to get soldered across. And we're going to be soldering across from here to there, there 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 to here back down across and then down again to the positive so going to go ahead and show you some of the technique that i use to solder the 
large copper braid or tinned copper braid on there and we're going to be using one of these per connection uh, this is 16 millimeter wide which should be good for around 140 ish amps no problem uh, continuous so me bursting up to 160 should be no problem at all for it so one connection per series and then yep that will be the final step and then balance leads uh, some final polish and we will be done all right so since it is time to start soldering i went ahead and did a couple test runs to make sure that i was going to be doing this with the correct amount of technique so for this braid soldering it is actually quite tough and this right here is the reason why it is tough i tried a couple different ways to do this and i think i've got it down enough to do it reliably on this first run i put on too much flux and it ran all the way into the center and after you flex it back and forth a couple times well it was like 10 or 15 times but it broke which is not what you want you want the center of your braid to not be saturated at all you can kind of see that this is hard this was my second attempt which is pretty good um, it's still not as flexible as I would like this, the flux soaked in a little bit too far third attempt I did pretty good still flexible but I couldn't get the end to fully seat in there not a huge deal but annoying and my final attempt here before going to the real pack uh, looks great the only reason this is a little bit divoted is because there's some residual flux in there but there's no solder so now you can see this is nice and flexible and go all the way like this I mean you shouldn't really do that with braid anyway but and come back and we're still good so I will show you guys how I did this and uh, we got to do it quite a few times now so let's get on it all right we've got a bunch of stuff going on here and let me explain my reasoning the easiest way to solder this pack realistically is in the enclosure so to that end I have some FR4 which is basically fiberglass that I'm going to be using to insulate the cells from the heat of the soldering iron now when I add some solder on here it does not have to be there for very long and I'm sure that if I pull the FR4 out and touch it I won't have any issue if you're able to do that the cells <clears throat> are just fine now what we're actually going to be doing here is taking these bits of copper braid and keep in mind I'm holding this very tightly because if I were to drop this across the cell group there that is a dead short and uh, you don't want that so I've got these plastic pieces here I've got some extra kydex that I just had laying around to cover up all of the joints that I will not be working with so the only thing that can happen here is the series connection from parallel from series group one to series group two now soldering process for this is uh, unique and I did a couple test runs like you guys saw to see what the best way to do it was for me and the way I'm going to be doing that is by first scoring the nickel with my exacto knife so we're going to score along here in a nice little line somewhere around the middle of the nickel tab basically we just want it to align with where the nickel or with where the copper is going to be landing so about the middle on each of course it's going to depend for you uh, based on how long your copper braid is if you're soldering with copper braid now of course i still have the option here to use uh, 10 gauge cables but that's going to take way longer and i want to use copper braid because it's a cool technique to use so we got that on there and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our nice hot iron and uh, i have a new soldering iron the hako uh, fx888d which is 120 watt iron uh, it's been performing really well so far and we'll make this soldering a breeze. So I'm going to take this on here. I'm going to go ahead and apply some solder in a nice little line. And you'll notice that it is sticking, one, because we have flux in the solder, and two, because we score the nickel. And now if I pull this off real quick and touch it with my finger, it's warm, 
but it's not too hot. Now, of course, we're going to want to be careful that we don't get the cells too hot. So that is exactly why we have that under there. All right, now we've got our two lines of solder. What we're going to do is preheat the copper braid, which might sound weird, but this really will help in making sure you get that good connection. So we're going to go ahead, press on this. Obviously, <laughs> you have to be careful with whatever you're setting this on that it's not going to combust. Fortunately, this hardwood is a pretty good candidate. And this is gonna get nice and hot. You want a wide tip on your iron for this. Now we're going to take this and we're going to try to set it into place. Now this part is the difficult part, which is getting this to stick properly while not heating up the whole area too much. So what we're gonna do is we're going to press down with our metal needle nose pliers right near the solder joint. And this is basically going to help us make sure we get a good solid connection. I'm going to come along here, press some heat into it. Now as you're doing this, it's going to heat up the nickel and the braid at the same time. And this is where it gets super challenging for a lower watt iron. You can see the solder starting to melt there. And what we're gonna do is apply a little bit of solder to the tip now. Now that we've got that partially seated, we can come through and apply some solder with flux in it to the edge of that connection. Now it's important you don't overdo this, otherwise the flux and solder will flow down the braid into the center, causing that hard connection to occur. Now, it doesn't look like there's a lot there, but really there is plenty there. As you can see here, we're just fine and the cells are unharmed. Now we have to do this on the other side, which is a little more challenging because the braid has spread out. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply a little bit of solder to our iron first to help it conduct the heat. We're going to press down with our needle nose pliers right near the joint. And we're going to press the heat right into the edge. Working our way along, getting that first set in. As soon as you start to feel it let up, you know that it's almost there. And now we're going to add a little bit of extra solder and make sure that it's fully melted through. And once you see that you have a nice flow all the way along the edge, most of the time, pretty good. Now, of course, this is going to be quite hot, even though the FR4 is protecting the cells. It's not something you want to touch right away. So, there's one joint, and now we have to do a whole bunch more. So, oh, as you can see, uh, the FR4 did get a little bit warm there, but think we're good. You really do have to be careful about how long you keep the iron on there. If anyone has input on how you would do this, let me know in the comments. But as you can see there, we still got a nice flexible joint in the middle and we have two solid joints at the ends. So let's keep on going.
Well, it has been about an hour and a, maybe a bit. I wasn't really tracking, but we're down to the last two series connections on this pack. And this one is joining the middle lane to the outer lane on this side. And then the other one is joining the outer lane on the other side to the middle lane. So we're almost there. I've gotten a little bit better at soldering these series connections along the way. I'm still using the same method of tinning the nickel here, preheating this, the uh, braid and then bringing it over. All right, I have finished off the soldering of all the series connections on the pack. And while it did take a while, it was definitely a good learning experience and it makes me want to use this uh, copper braid a little bit more for packs like this because, man, it just saves a lot of time. While it did, I mean, it took a while, but like one connection here, one connection there instead of three cables or two 10 gauge or whatever. And this is capable of all the amps that I need it to be. So. We're in a great spot here. Um, next up, I'm going to be soldering on the uh, discharge leads of the pack. Normally, I would recommend soldering these uh, onto their XT90s before you do the last series connection. Um, I'm just gonna be really careful and make sure I don't touch the leads together. But for anyone else, I would definitely recommend doing it before you finish off all these series connections. After that, we gotta do all the balance wires and uh, I'll probably just skip through a bunch of that because it's gonna take me probably half an hour to lay out the wires the way that I want them to. Alright, we have now got the two discharge cables soldered on here and it's time to start soldering up some other BMS cables before we hook up the balance wires and whatnot. So here we have this purple wire which is connected to the positive of the battery and that is going to be going directly to the positive on the SD20 charge port which in my case will be pin 1 because that's how I like to wire my charge port. So, we soldering this purple wire to pin one, but I've cut a piece off. I'll be soldering this to pin one, and then from the other side to here, there will be a fuse to make sure that my charge port is fused. All right, so I just finished soldering up all the charge port goodies. So we've got our SG, or is it SD? I think it's SG20 uh, charge port here. Got positive purple soldered up to one, negative white soldered up to two, and we got my little XT30 here. I don't intend to charge about 30 amps ever, so we're good there. And then I have the opposite soldered here. 
Uh, we have our little fuse holder here soldered in line on the positive. And uh, I always make my charge ports disconnectable because usually it just ends up making things easier. So there you go. Next is time for all the balance wires. And then we got a solder uh, B minus onto the BMS over, oh, I can show you. B minus will need to go on the BMS up here and uh, C minus is up there as well. So that's what's up next. All right, so <laughs> this is not gonna make much sense right now, but hopefully once I have it wired up, it will. So we're starting the balance wiring, um, going from BC zero, one, which will be here on the negative, two here on the negative, three on the negative, four on the negative, five on the negative, six on the negative, and all the way down. Um, one of these does need to get extended. This uh, BC zero one is not long enough, so I'm going to extend that right now, and uh, then we'll just start soldering. We're gonna probably get real close to the length we need for each of them and tape it in place and then snip the wire and then we'll solder them all in a row after that. All right, so we have come along and done almost all of the balance leads. There's only three left, BC 16, 17, and 18. And with this BMS that I'm using is the LLT Smart BMS, uh, the 4 to 21S version, which means you can use any battery uh, from 4 to 21S. And for the wiring of this, uh, I'll put the diagram on screen, but balance uh, 16 requires you to bridge uh, 16, 17, 18, and 19 together, which is these four wires, and then 20 and 21, or sorry, 21 and 22 will be the 17 and 18 for 18S. So on this <clears throat> joint, we're going to have four wires coming together right here, which is quite interesting, but should be pretty easy. So we'll do that now. All right, so I just finished off all the balance wires and now it's time to put the final cables onto the BMS and then we'll check the voltages and plug it in. So uh, right now we're going to solder up the blue wire, which is the battery negative to the B minus terminal on the BMS. Got it tacked in place and now we'll go ahead and finish it off. There you go, there's your B minus. And now we can go ahead and do C minus, which goes to the negative on the charge port. All right guys, well, I, uh, I forgot to record my audio, so I'm gonna put some clips that I recorded before over this while I'm pointing things out. So I was able to finish up the battery. I put some captain tape on it and I packed foam in around the edges, connected up the ESC 
uh, filled the hole for the charge port, which you can actually see right here, maybe. Big old SD20 charge port, and uh, hooked it all up, got it packed in there, and it is looking great. I'm really happy with how this battery came out. It's one of the bigger batteries that I've built in all of my battery building time, and hopefully it will provide a lot more speed and power to my race board. And well, it definitely will because the output from this battery is 160 amps, well, technically 180 amps max if you go by 30 amps per cell. And that is a lot. So when you compare that to the 40 amps of my old battery, it starts to come into perspective. But anyway, I'm really happy with how this came out. It looks really nice and um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this super long video. I'm sure this video is probably one of the longest battery building videos I've done, but it's an 18S battery and a 6P is nothing to sneeze at either. To be honest, 18S takes way longer than 12S just because there's so many more balance leads to connect. There's so much more welding to do. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. So hopefully you guys found this useful and were able to see how this all comes together and look forward to the next part in this series where I well I won't spoil it for now but anyway thank you so much for watching especially if you stayed all the way to the end you are awesome make sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the build and uh, I will be updating my form thread as soon as I get the time so stay safe keep on riding and peace out